good to be here again. I, to be honest, I hate this room because it's so wide. <laughs> so I will try to address all of you. Yeah, welcome to the session uh, about Disco API, JDK distributions as a service. Um, first of all, uh, yeah, a few words about myself. My name is Gerrit Grunwald. I'm working for Azul Systems, mainly on the Fuji.io. Did someone ever heard about Fuji.io? One, two, come on. You should check it out, Fuji.io. You will find out. It's all about Java. And the question here is how to get a JDK, right? So there are different ways on getting a JDK. So you can visit the vendor website, going to oracle.com, Bellsoft, Azul, whatever. Download it there. You can use a vendor API. Not everybody offers one, but Azul, Liberica, and Adoptium, I think they, they, these are the ones that offer APIs. So a short question, who is downloading a JDK on the website? You can be honest. It's not a shame. OK, so where did you get your JDKs from? So who is using an API to download a JDK? Just a few. Who is not using a JDK? So what are you guys doing here? <laughs> OK, so we have around 20 distributions, different ones. And um, they come in a six-month cadence. And the problem is the situation that we face is we have many distributions. We have multiple versions going down from, let's say, we start at 6, the old stuff we're not interested in, 6 till 19 EA. There's no central place to get them. So you always have to know, where can I get the JDK from, I don't know, whatever vendor, Dragonwell from Alibaba. You have to know where to get it, right? And then we have also different VMs. Like we have based stuff based on OpenJDK, and then we have stuff based on GraalVM. So this is not an easy choice. This is just the stuff that I figured out. That's the, mainly the JDKs that you can get these days. <clears throat> so who, for example, knows Tencent Kona? That's what I thought. Oh, was there one hand? No. Who are why B. Sheng? Also, yes. So this is, but this stuff is available, and um, they have specific purposes. For example, Tencent Kona is optimized for ARM processors. So, um, and you will find other stuff. And all these different distributions mainly are based on OpenJDK or on GraalVM. So, and then we have all these versions I mentioned already. So it's really not easy to find the right one. And then each version comes with update releases and so on and so on. So the idea was, wouldn't it be great if we would have one API to serve all of the different distributions that are available, no matter which version, which distribution, which, if it's based on GraalVM or OpenJDK or whatever. So, and that was the idea to get Disco API. Well, Disco just stands for Discovery API, but I, th I thought Disco sounds better. So, uh, yeah, that's the name. And it, it serves information about all these things like distributions, the version numbers, the platforms, then operating systems, architectures. You know, when the Mac M1 stuff came out, how did you know which distribution offers a version for Mac M1? Stuff like that, right? So you, the API can, can give you that information. We have information about the archive types, like is it a package for Mac or DMG or DEP or RPM or ZIP or whatever, or EXIF files or MSI. Terms of support, that means we have long-term stables and we have short-term stables. And then Azul also offers something like mid-term stable. But uh, this is, I think, not ongoing for the future. So who have heard of long-term stable? Come on, not so shy. Just four people, five people, and short-term stable. OK, nobody knows? Oh, you, you will probably know. And then we have package types, and so on, and so on. So it's a lot of information, and we try to collect all of that and aggregate it and give you an API that serves you for all this stuff. So first of all, we don't deliver packages. So you can't really get the, the actual package from us, but we just serve the URL to the download. The advantage of that is that even if we serve you the, the URLs, if you download it, the vendor will get the download, right? So we just give you the URL, and then the, you can download it from, from the website where, or from the API, wherever. And with this, and, and the reason for that is 
first of all, when you call our API, you have to call it once, ask for whatever version, distribution, and so on. And then you will have to do a second call to get the actual download URL. The reason for that is that we would also like to know doing some statistics, who is downloading, which version, and so on. So this is the main reason for that. And we don't save any IP addresses or something like that. We did that in the very first version, and then we directly skipped it, because it doesn't make sense. The only thing that we really save is, where's the download coming from? And this is the country. So for us, it was interesting to see, for example, do people from China download Tencent Kona using our API? Or do they download Adoptium from the US or wherever? So this is, uh, th that was the main reason. So we only serve the URL, no packages. And so we have a set of REST endpoints. And I will shortly go through the REST endpoints and give you an idea what you can do with that. So we have one that's called distributions, major versions, packages, and IDs. That's more or less the main things that you need. Uh, there are a couple of more uh, REST endpoints, but they are not that important to understand how it works. So let's take a quick look at the distributions endpoint. So if you call api.fuj uh, slash, uh, oh, slash disco v.30 distributions, and then you have some URL parameters like include versions, include synonyms. The synonyms is because we had to make, we have to find a name for a distribution. Let, let me give you an example. Um, there's, for example, Bellsoft's Liberica. And Liberica is the name of the distribution. And they also have something which is called Native Image Kit. That's the Liberica Native Image Kit, which is based on Gravian. So the name in our API is Liberica for the OpenJDK build and Liberica Native for the Native Image Kit. And the same goes for other distributions. For example, GraalVM comes with GraalVM. We only have the community edition because that's freely available. It comes with based on OpenJDK 11, 17, 16, and there might be 18 in the future. So we have created different distributions for that. So that means if you're interested in, let's say, GraalVM community edition based on OpenJDK 17, then you can ask the API to get that by calling it uh, GraalVM underscore CE17. So this is how it works. Uh, and the reason for the include synonyms is we, we figure out if you just type in GraalVM, we will give you what we guess it is and how you write GraalVM. It could be GraalVM, one word, Graal space VM, Graal underscore VM, and so on. That's the reason for the synonyms. So if we call, for example, distributions, and you see the, the, the rest call in the top line, then uh, in this case, we just exclude the synonyms. This would just be a list of names for, in this case, uh, Tamarin, for example. It could also be Adoptium. If you just type in Adoptium, you will get Tamarin. So this is the reason why we have the synonyms. And if you would like to see them, you can just say synonyms true, and it will show you all the available names for each distribution. Um, I, I said include versions false, because what we also do is, if you, for example, see Zulu here, there would be an additional field named versions, and then you, it will show you all the versions that we have for Zulu. So if you would like to check what is available, for example, for IBM Samaru distribution, you just say include versions true, and it will show you all the versions that we have for IBM Samaru. Um, then you can also do stuff like, instead of getting all the distributions, just ask for one specific one. Let's say slash Zulu will give you the opportunity to see what is available for or a Zulu, Zulu distribution. And you won't find any vendor name in the API. So we just have the names of the distributions. That might be a little bit tricky if you are used to say, oh, I use Oracle. OK. So with Oracle, you won't find anything big inside the API. But if you, for example, if you can't search for Azul, you won't find it. You have to know that the distribution name is Zulu. But there's also an endpoint that shows you all the, I showed you already. If you just search for distributions, it will show you all the stuff. So it gives you the official URI where you can, you can click that, and it will lead you to the download uh, page, for example. And in this case, I just did versions equals false, so we don't see any versions. If I enable that, it would look like this. And then you can see 
at the time when I did that, there was 19 EA8, and we have all these different versions, that, and it, it's going, I don't know, till 6 something. So we have a lot of versions there, and if you would like to check if your distribution supports a specific version, you can call the endpoint and check the versions field, and then you can see if it's available or not. Um, we can also, you can also ask for a specific version in the distributions. Let's say you would like to know versions 11.0.14, right? <clears throat> you, you would like to know who's supporting that. You can just type it in like this, versions slash the version number, and then again include synonyms false, include version false, and then you will get a list of all distributions that support 11.0.14, right? Because sometimes you have a, who's working as a, uh, as a consultant here in projects? Yeah, so you might probably have the, had the solution already or the, the situation in the past. You approach a new customer. The customer tells you, we are working on SAP machine 11013. So then you have to set up your machine with a JDK and all that stuff. So where do you get it from? So and then you can here check, is it available? Or you can also use another JDK, depends. Um, but this is in principle what the distribution endpoint does. Then we have the major versions. Major versions is in principle 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, and so on. So not with the, with the interim update and patch releases, just the first, the feature version. You can ask that endpoint to figure out, for example, what versions are the maintained ones. And maintained means as long as there's one distribution that offers updates for a specific major version, we just keep it as maintained. And at some point, if, it's not, if there's nothing coming anymore, we just set it to false. So you can, for example, ask the major versions endpoint, show me all ver major versions that are maintained. Then you will get a list of JDKs or numbers that, only, um, that will be maintained still, so there will be updates available. And the reason for that is that some distributions offer even updates, even if they are not officially, let's say officially by Oracle, are updated any longer. So, for example, we also have updates uh, for specific versions like 13 that are still coming updates, and, but this is not maintained for a long time anymore from the Oracle side of view. So that's the reason why we have that maintained flag. And you see here there's also this include build, because if you have uh, version numbers, then let's just take a look. Here you see this is include build. It just shows you, because the EA versions only differ by the, the, the build number in the end. So we have to add that. If I just would say include build uh, false, then we would only see one point, which is 19 EA, because we don't then make any difference. But with this, you can also select all the different uh, major versions that are available. <clears throat> you can also ask for a specific version. Let's say you would like to know 17, then you can add it like that, then it will show you only the stuff that is available that we have in the database for version 17. In this case, it was 17, 1701, and 1702, because the builds, it include builds false, right? If I would say include builds true, it would also sh show different builds, because sometimes you have a, a vendor like SAP machine, they offer the first version of, of a JDK, and then a couple of days later, they often offer a second build of it. So then it's important that you can also see the build number. OK. Um, and then you have this, this case where, let's say, JDK 19 at the moment is the new EA. That means it's only available as early access at the moment. But at one point in the future, it will become GA. So at, at that point, we, we, there is a difference in the numbering, right? Because we don't have the EA inside the version number anymore. You see it at the very button. If you include, if you do major version 17 slash EA, it will show you all the versions that are available, including the EA before it became a GA version. So GA general availability. OK. So then this is the most important endpoint, which is called packages. And the packages endpoint has lots of URL parameters, because with this, you can really shape your query for a specific JDK. You see we have also fields like FPU, that was uh, requested by someone who's mainly working on um, embedded devices like ARM. And on the ARM devices, you need to know if, it's, if there is a, um, what's the name? a hard float or soft float 
That means if you have soft flow, that, then it means floating point operations will be emulated by software. If you have hard flow, that means there is floating point operations are done in the, uh, in the CPU or a specific version of the CPU. And sometimes it's, it's needed that you, to make, to be, you are able to make the difference between uh, hard float or soft float on their devices. <clears throat> then we have something like TCK tested. This is quite new. We are working on that right now. That means if a JDK was tested by the TCK test, then or passed the TCK test, it will have a flag TCK tested true. So that means you can check. I would only like to see packages that pass the TCK test. Or with the Adoptium Tamarin release that came out uh, end of last year, they also invented a new test suite, which is called Aquavit. And now we also have this flag Aquavit certified. So that means you can, ch you can check if there is uh, the JDK, pass the TCK test, and pass the Aquavit test, and then you can just select only this ones. Um, you can see there is also a flag like directly downloadable, because we have uh, companies like Oracle or Red Hat. Uh, but Oracle changed, but the Red Hat, for, of, of course, you have to log in first because before you can download a JDK. And if it's directly downloadable, that means there is a direct link and you can download it directly. So there is a flag directly downloadable. That means you can filter for that. Then there's also JavaFX bundled because uh, Azul and Liberica, or like Bellsoft, uh, really bundling JavaFX in specific versions of the JDK. That means if you're working with JavaFX you, and you rely on a bundled version, you don't want to do it with the OpenJFX stuff, you can also ask for that, and then it will give you the, only the JDKs that come bundled with JavaFX. <clears throat> There's stuff like libc type. That means you have glibc, libc, and musl, or muzzle. And you can uh, differentiate this. Then there is a release status. That means, um, is it EA or GA? Um, but what else do we have? JDK version. That's an interesting field, because if you download, for example, a Graal VM version 22 something, which is based on OpenJDK 17, then I can't really figure out with the version number what, ver what JDK version was used, because they offer it with JDK 11 and JDK 17. So that means if you would like to download Graal VM 22 something based on OpenJDK 17, you can set JDK version to 17, and then it will only give you this ones. And this would be a typical output of this package JSON. So um, as you can see, we have stuff, all the stuff that I explained already, like the archive type, distribution name, Java version, and so on. There's a distribution version, because some distributions have internally different versions. As you see here, <coughs> Zulu has 17, 32, 13, which is an internal version. Uh, and sometimes that's important if you call the support. They ask you for, what, what is the, the Zulu version? And then you can give them this version number. Um, you can see if, if it's the latest build available. So there is a flag for that. Um, what else do we have? Let me check. Oh, we have the file name, of course. We have the size. We have, the size is not in this one, but it is there. We have checksum links and all these things. And there's also a, a redirect. So that means if you would like to directly get the link to download it directly, then you can also get that one. OK, the IDs, just one step back. If we, you see the, the first entry is ID here. So each package has a unique ID. And with this one, with this uh, result, you can't really download it yet, because as, except you use the redirect thing. But if you would really like to get the download link, you have to call the ID endpoint with this given ID of that package. So that means you search something, you get the ID, you call the ID's endpoint. And then it would look like this. And the, here you will see stuff like the checksum. The, there is the direct download URI that you can just use and download directly the, the package. It gives you the checksum type, if it's SHA-256 in this case. And there will also be something like signature URIs. That means if there is a signature URI for this specific package, we will provide that also in the future. At the moment, we don't have it <clears throat> because it's, uh, it's hard to get. That's, uh, the problem. OK, so the whole thing is open source. I have to say, not 100%, because we changed it in the meantime. So you can find the project here, uh, github.com, fuji.io, disco API. So 
this is 99% of the code that is running in production, and I update it all the time when I change something in production. The reason why this is not the code that is running in production is, first of all, we have some stuff in the production code that is using our internal infrastructure, so I, I probably don't want to put that open source. And uh, the other reason is that we changed it so that we have one specific service that just updates the API in the background. And this one is not yet open source because, it's a, in principle, it's a copy of that without all the, the API itself, but only with the updating stuff. But this is, like I said, I, just, I think I updated it yesterday to bring it to the, the latest state. So this is exactly the stuff that is running in production, except some minor changes that we do. So, but now the interesting parts. So, let's say you would like to ask for what is the latest JDK that is available with general availability, right? So, you can just ask the API, API FUJIO, Disco, blah, 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 and then you say major versions, latest, and include the build faults, and then you will get something like this. And you see the latest available GA is at the moment 18.01.1. And then you, you know this is the latest version. You can now search a packages endpoint with this version number for updates for your JDK, for example. Another question would be, give me the latest JDK GA from Zulu or from Tamarin or whatever, right? And then it will give you this, and it shows you, oh, at that point, there wasn't 18.01.1. That was just 18.01 in this case. <clears throat> so with this... Ability. This is just the API, right? I just show you some examples of the API, and then I will show you some tools that make use of the API. That is maybe more interesting. This is a little bit dry, to be honest. Um, the next thing is, for example, who has version 11.0.9.1 for macOS as a TarGZ with Arc64, which is uh, the M1 stuff. So then the call would be look like this: packages. You give it the version number the operating system, the architecture, the archive type and the package type. You can also search for JRE if you like, or for JDK. The default is JDK. And then the result will look like this. I just don't show you all the stuff, but in principle, it will give you, there are three Zulus and there's a JetBrains, right? Uh, yes, oh, we, yes, we also have JetBrains uh, JDKs in there. So it's the stuff that they use in their own distribution of IntelliJ, for example. Then you can ask for stuff like the latest long-term stable that, that includes JavaFX for Linux as a TarGZ for x64. And then it will look like this, and it will show you there's Zulu and there's Liberica. These are the only ones who offer uh, JDKs that came bundled or come bundled with uh, JavaFX. And you see that I asked for x64, but by li for the Liberica it says AMD64. This is in this whole synonym stuff that we use. So if you type in AMD64, we convert it internally to x64. So we know that this is the stuff that you are looking for. If you type in only ARM, it will be ARM32. If you type in ARM64, it will be ARC64. So we know there is a lookup table in the background that makes sure that you always get the right one, hopefully. If you don't get it, then just file an issue on, on GitHub, please. OK. So then you can imagine. The longer the, the list is of parameters, you can really drill it down to one specific JDK if you like. So now, um, to make it more usable for you guys, I've started creating plugins for all sorts of things, uh, like IDE plugins. So there's a plugin for IntelliJ, there's a plugin for Eclipse, for NetBeans, and also for Visual Studio Code. Now let's do a short poll. Who's using IntelliJ here? All right. Eclipse. Okay, NetBeans? NetBeans, no NetBeans, okay. And uh, Visual Studio Code? Okay, oh yeah, that's good. Um, so, <clears throat> as you see, I mean, I created, this is for IntelliJ and Eclipse, I had to use Swing. In Visual Studio Code, this is Node.js, and so I had to dig into all these different how to create a plugin. So they look, in principle, all the same. And they give you the ability to drill down. So that means the first thing that you select is major version, 17. Then it will show you in the version numbers all available version numbers. So you select the version number. In this case, for example, 17EA22. 
Then it will show you all distributions that are available for this build. Then you can select the distribution, and it will show you all the operating systems, and so on. So you can really drill down from top to bottom, and in the end, you can just press download, and it will download it to your machine. It won't install it, right? This is not SDK man. This is just a tool to download JDKs to a place on your machine, and then you can do whatever you like. And this in, the whole, in all the different uh, IDEs. <clears throat> and there is, uh, in NetBeans, it's even built in. So that means if you get the latest NetBeans, there is inbuilt uh, a tool that uses the Disco API. This is an older screenshot. I'm not sure, because they are working on that right now, I don't know if it looks still like this. <clears throat> but in principle, it's the same. You can also select all the different uh, distributions and then just download it. And in NetBeans, it also installs it somewhere. So NetBeans afterwards knows, like an IntelliJ, it knows where the JDK is installed. Then I created browser plugins for all these different browsers. So, and again, you see they look pretty much the same. I tried to make the, whole, the same plugin for all of these different things. What is that going on here? Yes, I know, sorry. Um, <clears throat> it's the same principle, and it's, uh, in your browser you see this little icon, it's the little duke, and if you click on that it will pop up this, this window, and then you can select the JDK, and then you, then you can download it. This is also nice if you just have the browser open, and you would like to check, is there maybe an update available? You can just check for the latest version number, it will, and it will pop up there, you see, then it's, uh, which one is available, and you can di directly download it. The name is always like Disco Idea, Disco Eclipse, whatever, Disco VSC for Visual Studio Code. And here it's Disco Chrome. If you go to the Chrome Web Store, you will find it under the name Disco Chrome. Then there is Firefox. It's called Disco Fox. This might not be available at the moment because I got a note that uh, they removed it for whatever reason. Um, so I have to recheck that one. Uh, for the Edge browser, you just look for Disco Edge and the Edge plugins page, and you can download it there. And for Safari, I had to create it using the Apple developer account. It's on the Mac App Store. So and if you download it there, it will be installed into Safari, and then you have the same thing there. <coughs> Opera, same thing. Opera add-ons page, just look for Disco Opera, and you can download it, uh, the plugin plug there. Other plugins, yeah, I've also created a little snippet that you can add on your blog, for example. I did it on my own blog, and um, it's just one piece of JavaScript. You can just add it there, and then it will show you the same thing that you already saw. Um, other tools, because this is all the plugins, um, I've also created a CLI, a command line interface for the API. So that means if you're running, for example, on Linux or Mac or Windows, uh, you can just download it as a binary. It was built using GraalVM native image, so it's really just one file. And then you can do, in principle, the same that you can do with the plugin. You can just select a JDK, a distribution, let's say, a version number. You can say you would like to have to bundle it with JavaFX or whatever, and then you can, it will directly download it to your hard drive. You can define the path where it should be downloaded. Let's say you have a CI CD system where you have batch files or scripts or whatever, and you would like to download a JDK in this, then you could probably use the Disco CLI to do that. It's, it's small, it's not that big, and it comes with some neat features. So, for example, if you don't do anything like um, the first one is Disco CLI, minus, minus D is the distribution Zulu, version 17, it should come bundled with JavaFX, and I would like to have the latest one, so that's the reason why I just say 17. So, and then it will directly, in this case, it, it was downloading Zulu 17.02 for Mac because it detects the architecture and the operating system automatically, so you don't have to do that. You can if you like, but if you don't do it, it will just take the stuff that it finds on your machine. Then the second one, it's downloading a specific version. In this case, it was Tamarin 17.02, Mac OS, it was for M1, and then I would like to have it downloaded to the user's Han Solo folder. And if you ask, for example, the third one, um, in this case, if it's not available, because that might happen, you get this uh, <clears throat> the error mes message, like, sorry, defined package not found in Disco API, but it gives you the stuff that is available for Liberica in this case. And it gives, gives it to you in a way that you can just copy it and just execute it, and it will download it then. So um, 
This is that stuff. It can also find and store JDKs. That might be interesting for some people, because if you give it a path and say just minus FD, find distributions, it will give you a list of all distributions that it found on that machine in that path. And it marks the one with an asterisk that is used at the moment, which is the, the JDK that is set. In this case, it was 1702 uh, 17 for macOS. And it found also a GraalVM version. I mean, everything that is supported in, in the Disco API, it will show up here, which is convenient. And it gives, all you, it, it gives you always in a way that you can use it for, for other stuff. Like here you see it's, for example, the last one is Zulu, comma, and then the version number, comma, macOS, comma, the architecture, and then comma FX. And this can be used if you would like to search for an update. Let's say you have a, a version on your machine. <clears throat> and you would like to check if is there an update available for this version, you can use this string as shown on the top, and it will show you updates that have been found for this, uh, for this specific string. Right? In this case, because I didn't specify the archive type, it gives me all the, the available options like DMG, zip, tar, GZ, and uh, JREs in this case, because I, I said it should be a JRE. Okay, that's Disco CLI. This is available also on GitHub as a binary. Just check the releases and then you can download it for your platform. <clears throat> it should work. If not, just let me know. It's available also for, should be available for Arc64 Linux. I'm not sure, but uh, hopefully. <clears throat> okay. So then there's another tool that I wrote, and I wrote this tool because I'm lazy. And I'm really, I, I hate it to check for all the different JDKs the websites, and even with the API, I had to use a tool to check if, the, if there's an update. So I thought, wouldn't it be great if, if there's a tool that just scans my computer for JDKs and checks for updates? And if there's an update, it just says, OK, there's an update. And you can click it and download it. And that's the, the main reason why I created JDKmon. And it will look like this. I have to be honest, I created it for Mac because I'm working on Mac. The Windows version should look Windows-like. I hope so but I don't even have a Windows machine, so I try to make it as good as possible. <clears throat> this is a JavaFX application, which is uh, running as a native compiled application using JLink, and uh, it shows you the list of JDKs that it founds on my machine, and it also detects stuff like the JavaFX SDKs. If you have, for example, OpenJFX installed, it also shows you this stuff. If there is an update available, it shows you like an arrow, arrow with, the, with the version number, and then in the end, you see the format that is available. For, for the last row, it's zip. You just click on the zip, and it will download it to your machine. And there's other stuff, like you see, um, yeah, that's the one with the updates. Then we have the info about alternatives. So this is the, the white one with the eye inside. This is, for example, you have a version on your machine installed, like in this case, whatever, let's say the uh, 1702, or no, it's 18. Uh, EA plus 34, and you see there's this dot behind. If you click on it, it will show you if there is any other distribution that has a newer version available. So let's say your distribution doesn't support the latest and greatest available uh, version number, then it will show you, wait a minute, there is one where you can get the latest version. So just in case, if you're interested in that. It has an info about release notes. It's the, it's the blue one with the question mark. So this will link to FuJIO because we try to collect and aggregate all the release notes for each of the updates. And if I find them, I will show you this. You can click on it. It will open the browser and show you the release notes for this specific uh, JDK. If it comes bundled with, with JavaFX, then there is this FX in the braces behind the, the distribution name. And you also see for the GraalVM stuff, it shows you on which JDK this is based, so if it's 11 or 17 in this case. And then there is another one, which is the CVEs, which is known as Common Vulnerability and Exposure. Uh, who, who ever heard of that, CVEs? Yes, that's good. Um, there is a database where you can check for CVEs. So, and if there is a CVE for a specific JDK, I add this red exclamation mark sign there, this attention sign. You can click on that, and then you will see something like this. It will show you CVEs that, it, that have been found for this specific JDK. 
in the database with its score. It's also colored. If it's above 9 or 8, it's red and stuff like that. You can click on the green stuff, and it will open the CVA database and will show you the information so that you can check. I have to say, because I don't check for each individual distribution, let's say we have Liberica installed, and it's Liberica 1601. And then what the, the tool will do, it will check the CVE database for Oracle OpenJDK for this specific version, 1601. That doesn't mean that Liberica is affected by the CVE, but at least you get an idea that OpenJDK was affected, and Liberica is based on OpenJDK. So maybe Liberica, this version of Liberica, might be affected. So it's just a hint for you to check if there is a vulnerability for this uh, JDK that you have installed. Um, there's also the ability, you saw that already, in the tool to directly download something. If I would like to, to find something for another platform, I can directly do it from that tool. The tool is running in the, in the menu tray, so there's just a little duke. You can click on it, and then it will show you all this, this information that you saw. Yeah, you can download the JDK, exactly. And then, this is again available uh, on GitHub as, uh, as source code and also as a binary, if you like. And it's available for... I hope all platforms, so it should work on all the different platforms that we have. <clears throat> then we have GitHub Actions. So who's using GitHub Actions here? For CICD, I guess, right? Um, there's a little bit of a story behind set, uh, GitHub, set up Java. Version 1, which was established for, I don't know how long it was running, it always fall back to Zulu. So it used Zulu, Zulu and there was no choice for the distribution. Um, and most people didn't know because it, it worked. So, okay, that's fine. Then they came up with the second version of the API. In the second version, they added something like distribution. So you can choose between distributions. And as far as I know at the moment, it's Liberica, Microsoft, um, Tamarin, and Zulu. Tamarin is the Adoptium stuff. So you can choose that. So what, what if you would like to use SAP machine? No way. If you would like to use, I don't know, Dragonwell from Alibaba, you can't. There are solutions to do that. What we, what, what we did, <clears throat> I just took the version one, <clears throat> set up Java, and just added a distro field. And if you call this action, you can use every distribution that we support in Disco API. So that means if you would like to use a set up Java on GitHub Actions with some specific JDK, that is not supported by the official one, you can use the Fuji IO setup Java at Disco to do that. It's available on the, if you search on uh, GitHub, I think there's also a link. Oh, wait, no. It's, if you go to, um, to GitHub slash Fuji IO, you will find all the stuff that we did there. And there's also an example on how to use the, the setup uh, Java from Fuji IO for your stuff. Oh, yeah, and to, to just as a reminder, if you don't give it a distro, it will just act like the former version 1. So it will fall back to Zulu. So in principle, if you have GitHub Actions using version 1, you can just switch to this setup Java, and it will work the same way. And then you can also select the distribution. Let, let's say Coretto in this example. OK, so who's using it? That might be interesting for some people. <clears throat> uh, so who, who's know, who knows Java Almanac? <clears throat> yeah, so he's using uh, this, this thing. He's using a, a Disco API to update the, all the JDKs. Paketo build packs, they use the Disco API. JReleaser, who knows JReleaser here? Just one. You should take a look at that. Really great project. <clears throat> JBang, someone? Heard of it? JBang also uses Disco API. And the next one might be interesting because SDK man, who's using SDK man? SDK Man is using Disco API to get the JDKs. So um, they approached us and asked us because they, they know it's a hassle to, to really scrape all the websites for all the latest data. And so they have been very happy that we did that and they use it now. So just as a last word, because then we have some time for questions if there are any, just to give you an idea how it's working. So we have set up something in AWS. It's uh, some Kubernetes cluster where we have the nodes that are really the current Disco API nodes, and then we have this updater node that is running 24-7, scraping all the websites, APIs, and collecting the data. 
updating it to a database, and then the, the API nodes, the, they just get the data from there. That's how it's, it's working in principle. And um, because it's, the code is open source, so if you miss something or if you find a problem, you can always just file an issue. You can ping us or ping me because I did all this stuff. Um, and you can also um, participate if you like. So we had people that just checked the code and said, oh, we are, it would be nice to have this and that in there. So it's, we are open to that. It's, it's open source. And with this, I'm open for questions. And the people who didn't check out Fuji, I would just go there and check it out. Thanks.